How do we hold people accountable? How do I hold people to high standards? I think that's a great question. I get it asked a lot. And I think in today's culture, right, over the last couple of years, we've really seen a, a rise in dollar per rep and higher standards. And so it's been awesome and it's only getting higher. So that question of accountability comes up a lot. And, and I had this question years ago where I thought, you know, I did a little personal inventory. I think I have room for improvement with holding people to higher standards and holding people accountable. So I came up with my short list of people that I thought were awesome at holding others accountable. I set up my one-on-ones. I got all kinds of great information, all kinds of gold. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do great at this accountability piece. And then the last person that I interviewed was Gary Polson. And I asked Gary, Gary, how do you hold others accountable? I thought he was going to be the master of this because I just looked at his team and I'm like, man, everybody that reports to Gary is a superstar. So he must be great at holding people to high standards. I asked him the question. He had no time to prepare. So he, he didn't put a methodical rehearsed answer together for me. He's just thinking about it. And he's like, Jamie, I don't think I'm the right person to ask. I think there are others that are better at holding people accountable. He says, for me, I just hire highly self-accountable people. So I don't have to hold them accountable. They're they're self-accountable. And I'm lucky as a father, my three kids, they too are self-accountable. I haven't had to hold them accountable to do their homework and get good grades. So I don't think it's a skill I'm really good at. I think you probably want to ask somebody else. And that made me pause and say, you know, maybe the question I should be asking, you know, it, it isn't how do I hold others accountable? Maybe the better question is how do I hire more self-accountable people? Maybe that's the question. And so I call this episode accountability part two because part one was really covered in episode 27 many moons ago. And in that uh, episode, I shared the same story of, you know, going down that journey, getting to Gary Pulse, and I'm like, aha, you know, self-accountability. There's a there's a key. And I, I gave the nuts and bolts really on, well, how do you hold others accountable without losing the relationship? How do you set high standards without, again, breaking that relationship? Really important. But part two, I really want to focus on how do I inspire others to be self-accountable? That's what we're going to cover here today. If you've been following this channel for some time, you already know my first point. What's my first point? I've got a series of points I'm going to give you. Well, point number one, it's kind of my go-to. You've got to model the behavior. You've got to be the example. you got to take accountability. Now, let's unpack this a little bit. Well, accountability means when you screw up, you own it and you vocalize it. You seek forgiveness. You apologize. You know, I've got to, I'm, I'm raising young kids here. And as my kids are in their adolescence, I'm always blown away and I give them a ton of credit. And I really want to make this point, you know, amplified with them. Every time I hear an apology from my kids, I don't just like, okay, thank you. It's like, no, I, I recognize that takes a lot of maturity. I know a lot of adults that are too proud to apologize, too proud to seek forgiveness. So look for those opportunities when you screw something up because you are screwing something up. I'm screwing something up often. Be quick to look for an apology. You give the apology. That's what accountability looks like. Model that behavior and you're going to get accountability, self-accountability with your team. Point number two, connect the dots. I know you're familiar with the song Dem Bones. Oh, Dem Bones, what are you talking about, Jamie? A little nursery rhyme. Let me know if this sounds familiar. The toe bone's connected to the foot bone. The foot bone's connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone's connected to the leg bone. Now shake them skeleton bones. Okay, so you know that song, right? You've got to be great at connecting the dots with the today. Here's what's going on today. And here's the connection of the dots to what tomorrow looks like. Episode 126 was the cute little nursery rhyme digger dan book that i read okay not sure if you like that or not but stan the steam shovel man was great at you know digger dan's like listen i don't want to work man i don't want to be digging up stuff i know that's what i'm built for but i'm just not motivated he connects the dots to the bigger picture 
So you've got to be great at that. I think when you're describing the task, whatever it is that we're doing today, and we got to get our fingernails dirty, be great at reminding people of how today is connected to tomorrow, how it's connected to the day after the day. I mean, think about how much can get done over 10 years. And most people, I don't think, are thinking about today impacting 10 years from now. But the more your voice is connecting today to 10 years from now, the more self-accountable your people are going to be. Point three, your word is your bond. Help people understand how important that is. Now, I'm about to go down a little bit of a storytelling or a rant here about Donald Trump. I already know half of you are going to be like, oh yeah, awesome. And the other half are like, you know what, turn this thing off. I don't want to hear anything about this guy. But before this guy was a politician, okay, he was a business person and he ran a very successful TV show called The Apprentice. So again, I just want you to take the politics out of the equation. I used to read all his books back in the day. I used to be a big fan of The Apprentice. I remember when season one came out, I'm like, I'm hooked on this. I like this reality TV show. And so at a seminar, right? I remember years ago, I went to a seminar and he spoke at the seminar. I wanted to know how to, how to really be successful in real estate. And that was really the topic of the seminar I went to. He was one of the guest speakers. And he said this story that I'll never forget. He's like, listen, before the reality TV shows became really popular, they were tanking. And there was this reality TV show called The Rebel Billionaire with Richard Branson and it tanked. And a guy by the name of Mark Burnett was talking to Donald Trump about, hey, listen, I got this idea, you know, The Apprentice, all this other stuff. And Donald said, yeah, sure, let me know when you want to do it and I'll do it. Years had passed and Mark Burnett called Donald Trump and said, hey, we're ready to do The Apprentice. Donald makes a presentation uh, in the board of his company, and the board's like, no, we ain't doing it. It's it's going to tank. It's going to devalue the Trump name. We're not going to do it. And Donald's like, well, listen, I already told Mark that we would. Yeah, but there's no legal contract. There's nothing in writing here, Donald. Don't worry about it. We don't have to do it. And he's like, I don't think you understand. I gave Mark my word. Like, that's all I needed to give him. I didn't need to sign a legal contract. And so I just remember, you know, that, and it's kind of like, huh, is your word your bond? Or do people look at you and say, you know what, if you say something, I can take it to the bank. And so that left a big impact on me that I want that reputation, that if I tell somebody I'm going to do it, right, if I give you my goal, then listen, you can take it to the bank. It's a foregone conclusion. You can already start spending the money because the money's coming in. So I want to model that, of course, and I want to regurgitate that. And I want to make sure that the people that I have on my team, they understand and they too value that your word is your bond. My last point, and it's similar to the previous point of like your word should be your bond. I want my reputation to be one of trustworthiness, right? I want to be trustworthy, that I want to be relied on as someone that's honest and truthful. So if I'm forecasting incorrectly, if I say, you know, I've heard this before, shoot for the stars and hit Mars, right? Like think big, shoot for the stars and listen, if you fall short, then at least you hit Mars. I don't really like that. I mean, even though sure you're moving forward, I don't want the reputation of, well, he's a little bit of a dreamer. He's thinking, a little outside the box and like night, he doesn't fulfill that. I want to be known as somebody that's fulfilling his obligation, somebody that's trustworthy that again, if I say X, again, my word is my bond, you can take it to the bank. Maybe it's X plus 10%. Sure, I want to overshoot. It's like shoot for Mars and then hit the stars is kind of my attitude, but I want to have the reputation of trustworthiness. I want my people to value trustworthiness. And so all of this, when you think about all these different things of inspiring self-accountability, it's really having a team that's really bought onto the same page of values. So if you've got the values that are super important to you, that you're modeling, you're sharing this with others, you're talking about it often. It's one thing to share the values on day one with somebody and then six months go by and ask somebody, hey, what are the values of this company? I don't know, you know, sell a lot of stuff. Well, then you're really missing the mark. The values must be talked about often in many meetings 
And that's how you're going to get the culture of self-accountability.